Hello everybody and welcome again to my channel. I am going to give a preview of the 2017 Regional Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses. How? Well, I have inside information. And how did I get it? Well, let's just say that Jehovah's hand is not short towards those who are making known his name. Anyways, no doubt right now, countless brothers and sisters are spending hours preparing their parts for presentations at these conventions. And I know this because or over 20 years ago, I was in a part on a district convention at the time. And we spent countless hours rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing to the point where by the time it was time for me to give my part on the convention or be in my demonstration, I had basically memorized my entire line because of how much practice went into it. And there's, there's a lot that goes into that. So there's a lot of people working very hard and I am going to steal their thunder because Jehovah has granted me the privilege to do so. So I'm going to start by discussing the last talk of the convention. Keep an expectation, it will not be late. So this is a talk that as I've looked over it, could have been given over 30 years ago when I first started going to conventions. When I was five years old, I could have heard the same talk and I heard it every year for almost 30 years. Um, it varied a little bit, sometimes they changed it, but this talk is extremely reminiscent of the stuff that I heard when I was a kid. So, they asked the question in this talk, how do we know that it will come soon? And these arguments were used more than 30 years ago. So it talks about the prophecy in Daniel chapter 12. It goes to a number of points, and it basically applies these all to Jehovah's Witnesses. And it says, all these, these things, says they would wake up to everlasting life, they would shine brightly, they would rove about in God's word to find enlightenment, they would undergo a dash into pieces, they would be refined and would cleanse themselves. And many of these things are applied to the early 1900s, um, times after 1914, they apply it to things that happened to the Jehovah's Witnesses. However, Garrett Loesch just reminded Jehovah's Witnesses that they're still roving about. So if they're still roving about, well, maybe that puts the end just a little bit further off, doesn't it? But they make a very interesting argument here. They say that Jesus made it clear that some of this generation would still be on earth when the Great Tribulation begins. Relatively few are now left of that generation. Does this argument sound familiar to anybody? This book I'm holding here is called The You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth book first published in 1982. I am showing you page 154. I'm going to read a paragraph, or a sentence rather, from paragraph 8, 2. Or actually, I'll read 3. It says, which generation did Jesus mean? He meant the generation of people who were living in 1914. These persons yet remaining of that generation are now very old. Okay, I'll read a few more sentences. It says, however, some of them will still be alive to see the end of this wicked system. So of this we can be certain, shortly now there will be a sudden end to all wickedness and wicked people at Armageddon. That's paragraph 8, page 154, on the You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth book. I highly recommend that you go to your own Kingdom Hall and get that in your Kingdom Hall's library if you don't have a copy. This copy was copyrighted from 1982. So like I said, you could have heard this same talk 35 years ago. Now, continuing with my discussion of this talk, so they uh, again try to establish that we know that it's going to become uh, the end of, or Armageddon rather, will become be coming soon. So they ask a question, it says, can you see that pure worship is more exalted now than at any other time in history? This is the same question that was asked 35 years ago. It says, Jesus foretold that true worshipers, his followers, would preach the good news of the kingdom in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations. Think of how far the preaching work has come in this past century. So here, Jehovah's Witnesses actually have a substantial problem. This is that they're purposefully hiding information from people. The only places where Jehovah's Witnesses are successful preaching is places where other Christian missionaries from other denominations have already been successful in preaching. Their converts, for the most part, are others who are already Christians of one denomination or another. So in reality, they can hardly take credit for spreading the news about God's kingdom around the earth. The one thing they can take credit for is spreading their peculiar brand of the teaching of God's kingdom 
which is something that is extremely divergent from mainstream Christianity. So they ask an interesting question here. They say, should we take an extreme view of Jesus' words, all the inhabited earth, as if we must reach every individual on the planet with the kingdom message before Jehovah will bring an end to the present system of things? So this question is interesting because it was posed by none other than Charles Taser Russell well over 100 years ago. And he took the view that the preaching to people in New York City was sufficient to cover the entire earth because people from so many different parts of the earth resided in New York City. So this modern question is nothing more than a rehash of a question that was asked by an individual over 100 years ago. The argumentation is the same. Charles Taze Russell utilized his argument to say the end has to be close because we've preached to everybody. By everybody, he only meant New York City. So Jehovah's Witnesses' current argument is the end has to be close because we've preached to everybody. And by everybody, they mean, well, everybody who they've currently preached to. So it's just a new version of the same argument. Then they go on to use the argument from 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. It talks about how bad the world will be in the times of the end. And they talk about how the ugly traits are increasingly prevalent today. We live in such a horrible planet, don't we? But there is one stark problem with this argument. The population of planet Earth is currently the highest it has ever been in history. People are living longer than they ever have in history. Medicine has cured diseases. More people have food. Uh, war is percentage-wise pretty much at an all-time low. Violence percentage-wise is a pretty much all-time low. So there is this discrepancy because the things that are reported in the news are the bad things that are happening. So let's say back in the days of the Apostle Paul, if they had CNN or uh, Reuters or whatever, if they turned on the news and all that was reported was the bad things, they would not be able to get through their day without reading about all the murders, you know, all the wars going on, all the famines, all the diseases, because those things were considerably more prevalent percentage-wise of the population way back then than they are now. Overall, Civilization is much more civilized than it ever has been. And if that were not true, it would not be physically possible for over 7 billion people to be alive on the planet. And it would not be physical, physically possible for life expectancy to be as high as it is. Therefore, the argumentation that Jehovah's Witnesses use about how bad the earth is, is actually nothing more than fear-mongering. As many problems as we currently have on the planet, this is actually the best time in all of history to be alive. When would you rather be alive? Would you rather be alive a couple hundred years ago when you could have died from strep throat? We have penicillin now, so diseases that kill people on a regular basis no longer kill as many people. We have uh, antibiotics, we have surgical interventions, we have all kinds of uh, machines that can uh, be utilized by surgeons to look at our bodies in ways to help them to fix problems. And granted, not everybody receives the same standard of medical care, which is still a problem, but the average standard of medical care that people do receive is way better than anything that Paul ever could have gotten in his lifetime, period. So this argument of how horrible of a time we're living in falls flat on its face because the reality is this is honestly the best time to be alive in all of human history. So anyways, just one more thought about the, the generation thing. This is a watchtower from 1984. The date is May 15th, 1984. And it says, the generation that will by no means, or the generation that would not pass away. Go look this up in your kingdom hall or find someone that has a copy. Unfortunately, not to dishonor anybody that's in that picture, but those individuals all have one thing in common. As you can guess by the fact that this picture is over 30 years old, and they're all very old in this picture, the one thing they have in common is that none of them are with us anymore. That generation has passed away. However, when I was young, I was told that the very fact that that generation was so old was proof that the end had to be near. So, that was not true. It was never true. It had nothing to do with light getting brighter. I was told something by Jehovah's Organization which proved to be wrong. And Jehovah's Organization is now recycling that same tired argument 
as if they've never put it forth before, to encourage people to believe that the end is near. And what they encourage people to do with that belief is basically to sacrifice more of their time and their money towards activities that will benefit the Watchtower. So they want you to put your life off and do more Watchtower activities because the end is so close. Newsflash, for Jehovah's Witnesses, the end is always so close. It is always imminent. For the organization that is now called the Watchtower, the end has been imminent for over 130 years. And as long as that organization is alive, is around, I have no doubt that the end will always be imminent. So, there's a preview of the encouragement that you're going to receive from the last talk of the convention. Encouragement that they've been given for over 130 years to become more active in the service of the organization because the end is going to come probably tomorrow. So, since tomorrow hasn't come for over 130 years, and this is God's organization telling you that, well, you decide how much faith you want to put in that. I'll leave that one to you. Thanks for listening.